Hi there, my name is Shelby Asesco, and I'm a GI surgery and nutrition support dietitian in Los Angeles, California. Today, we're going to be focusing our efforts on discussing thymine and its relation to parental nutrition therapy. I hope you are as excited as I am, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, I want to review what thymine is and its role in metabolism. So thymine is otherwise known as vitamin B1, which we know is one of our water-soluble vitamins. It is essential for aerobic metabolism, which we'll touch base on today. Thymine is rapidly absorbed in the jejunum and the ileum of the small intestine. Our intestines are exposed to two different sources of thymine. Number one, through our diet or nutrition, and number two, through a bacterial source in which the vitamin is generated by our normal intestinal flora or microbiota. Current evidence tells us that the active absorption of thymine is the most important factor in maintaining normal thymine levels. So following absorption, thymine is initially phosphorylated into thymine pyrophosphate or TPP, which is the active form of this vitamin. It plays a key role, as I mentioned, in aerobic metabolism as a coenzyme in several functions associated with metabolism of carbs, proteins, and lipids. TPP is a cofactor for multiple steps in both the glycolysis and our PDH complex of carbohydrate metabolism. So let's kind of sum this up. A deficiency of the active form of thymine, or TPP, reduces the ability of these described enzyme processes that we talked about to continue on as expected and can lead to impairment of the aerobic use of glucose. So maybe perhaps you've heard how thymine is important for the conversion of lactate to pyruvate. Well, if someone has a thymine deficiency, lactic acid can begin accumulating, leading to metabolic acidosis. So the World Health Organization defines three syndromes of adult thymine deficiency. So number one, the more chronic thymine deficiency with peripheral neuropathy. Formally, maybe you've heard this as dry beriberi. Number two, acute thymine deficiency with lactic acidosis, which was formerly known as wet beriberi. And number three, fulminant thymine deficiency with cardiomyopathy or shoshin beriberi. Shoshin means sudden collapse in Japanese. So this type, as you may have suspected, involves tachycardia, shortness of breath, and circulatory collapse. Wernicke encephalopathy, or WE, as you may have seen, is an acute deficiency state primarily involving thymine's neurological roles. Symptoms may include acute confusion, ataxia, and motor abnormalities of our eyes, and can progress to Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, if not treated. This really is where an individual may show signs of psychosis or even irreversible neurological deficits. The body has minimal thymine stores other than the liver, which is no more than about 30 milligrams in total. And thymine's half-life is roughly two to three weeks. So tissues with a high metabolic demand, such as our heart or our nervous system, can become thymine deficient in only a few weeks if supply is inadequate. Signs and symptoms of thymine deficiency may appear in even a shorter time if an individual is already deficient or has increased losses, malabsorption, is critically ill, has prolonged poor oral intake, or even has exposure to large doses of carbohydrate or dextrose, like when we see an individual starting on parenteral nutrition therapy. Although thymine deficiency is associated with alcohol abuse, it is being increasingly recognized that deficiency can occur in patients without this history. Some other risk factors for thymine include malignancies, diabetes mellitus, hemodialysis, and continuous renal replacement therapy. Once a patient has demonstrated signs of deficiency, replacement really is recommended immediately, even without laboratory confirmation. Inadequate provision of intravenous nutrients due to parenteral nutrition component shortages has resulted in patient harm. In multiple published cases, 
acute thiamine deficiency has occurred in roughly two to three weeks uh, from individuals after starting parenteral nutrition therapy that did not include thiamine. Case reports published have even reported deaths, unfortunately, due to cardiac failure when thiamine was held. These reports emphasize that it's not an uncommon occurrence, even though we have so many decades of experience in parenteral nutrition. Therefore, clinicians should be aware of what amounts of thiamine the PN contains, whether it be from a multivitamin admixture or if there's individual supplementation, and then think, well, is this amount adequate for this particular individual's clinical needs? Early suspicion and recognition of thiamine deficiency is definitely needed so that therapy can be immediately initiated. This, as you can imagine, becomes a concern with both our short and our long-term parenteral nutrition patients if there's not adequate provision of thiamine. Not administration of thiamine during parenteral nutrition is serious, but a preventable situation. Because of thiamine's essential role in glucose metabolism, administration of the large glucose load that is associated with TPN formulations increases the body's metabolic demand for the vitamin. Thymine supplementation at levels meeting the RDA for healthy individuals unfortunately don't meet the needs for everyone, especially TPN-dependent patients or those whom have pre-existing malnutrition. As we know, the importance of a nutrition support team in the delivery of safe parental nutrition is really essential. Don't forget, managing drug shortages, including PN components, requires an interprofessional team, good communication in order to input and to really develop a plan to help ensure our patients are receiving the adequate amounts of nutrients, even during drug shortages. All right, and thanks so much for joining us today in our discussion on thymine as it relates to parenteral nutrition therapy. If you have any questions at all, please go ahead and leave them in the chat, and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care, all. Mm -hmm.